ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಟೀಂ ಪರಂ ವೇದಾಂತ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಅ ವಾಮ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಿಫ್ಟ್ ಗೀತಾ ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ನರ್ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಮೇಷನ್ we continue our study of bhagavad gita chapter 6 on dhyana yoga in today's session we cover verses 33 to 37 of this chapter we have with us shrimati radha ravi dr sanjay mehrotra shrimati pannaga prasad shri baskar and dr asha nayak explaining today's verses the session will be moderated by dr anupama shetty who will introduce us to the topic and provide us deeper insights facilitating manana after shravan of each of the verse over to you anupama ma'am thank you madam vasmati om shri gurubhyo namaha sada shiva samarambham shankara acharya madhyamam asmada acharya paryantam vande guru paramparam om as vasmati just said we are doing now bhagavad gita chapter 6 verses 33 to 37 lord krishna had comprehensively discussed the various aspects of meditation starting with the general disciplines or bahiranga sadhanani in which he said equanimity self confidence self effort and self mastery were needed second the specific disciplines or antaranga sadhanani which included rahasi sthitaha ekagi samamam kaya shiro griva and many other requisites third dhyana swarupam which included dharana dhyanam and samadhi fourth dhyana phalam which lord krishna described as prashanta manasam and uttamam sukham and fifth dhyana pratibandha parihara Today we are now entering the fifth topic which we called dhyana vignaha or antarayah or pratibandha meaning obstacles and their parihara we see that arjuna's obstacle to dhyanam was chanchalatvam of the mind or lack of mano nigraha in the katopanishad we have seen yama dharma raja say atmanam radhinam vidhi the previous slide please shariram ratham evatu buddhim tu saratim vidhi manaha pragraham evacha this means if you the jeevatma the atmanam should be the master of the chariot then your buddhi or intellect which is called the charioteer here should be in full control of the mind which is compared to the reins of pragraham this is called mano nigraha otherwise we just get dragged around by the leash like this man and the leash here is our minds next slide please the primary obstacle we see is mental indiscipline and this is overcome by mano nigraha or mastery of the mind called sadhana chatushtaya sampatti again referring to katopanishad यह तो अविज्ञान अविज्ञानवान भवति अयुक्तेन मनसा सदा तस्य इंद्रियानि अवश्यानि दुष्ट अश्व इव सारते हे दिस मींस व्हेन वन लैक्स डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एंड हैज एन अनडिसिप्लिन्ड माइंड हिज सेंस ऑर्गन्स आर एज अनकंट्रोलेबल एज एन अनरूली हॉर्स देयरफॉर यम धर्म राजा हैड सेड विज्ञानवान भव एंड हाउ इज दिस पॉसिबल first our emotion next slide please our emotional quotient is strengthened by upasana that is samadhi shatka sampatti then by becoming a sadhana chatushtaya sampanna and gaining jnana yogyatha this emotional quotient is further strengthened and with jnanam the mind starts connecting jeevatma with paramatma this is called spiritual quotient or spiritual intelligence we then lead a value based life 
living in harmony with our values and connecting with something much, much larger than our limited body-mind complex enhances our spiritual quotient. When all four factors, next slide please, yeah. When all four factors, meaning the body, the sense organs, the mind and intellect are healthy and work in harmony, it is called Arjavam. This becomes the symphony of our lives. We find FIR is reduced. Not forgetting study of scriptures or Swadhyaya is mandatory. This is how a person becomes Vignanavan. But if Buddhi cannot guide the mind, and if the mind cannot guide the sense organs, the result is cacophony instead of symphony. Our scriptures mention various obstacles to dhyanam and their remedies. This we have seen in Gaudapada's Karikas in the Mandukya Upanishad. There are four of them. First is seen in Tamoguna predominant people. We see that the silence and withdrawal from all activities during meditation induces sleep by the law of association. So what is the remedy? We have to tackle the causes of sleep. The causes being Bahu, Ashana or overeating, Ajirna, Nidra, Shesha, inadequate sleep and Abhyasa, meaning the mind associates closure of the eyes and withdrawal from activity as a harbinger of sleep. The second is Vikshepa. Next slide, please. Yeah. We see in Raju Guna Pradhana people, the extrovert mind starts wandering during meditation. And the remedy for this is Viveka Abhyasa and Vairagya. The third is Kashaya. Next slide. During meditation, the mind can get stunned into inactivity. This is called Sthabdi Bhavaha, resulting from some stifled, traumatic or negative emotions which tend to get activated during meditation. The remedy is just let the steam out. Stop suppressing. Try to identify the underlying cause of these emotions. This is called Kashaya Vijaniya. The fourth and the last is Rasa Aswadaha. This is a bout of Vishayananda or joy resulting from a transient and relaxed state of the body-mind complex. This can become an addiction. The remedy is Viveka. Realize that this is just conditional pleasure and all the while I'm Purna and Asangaha. So what were Arjuna's obstacles in the path of Dhyanam? Madam Radha Ravi will explain verse 23 for us. Radha Ravi, please. Thank you, ma'am. Shri Guru Namaha. The sixth chapter focuses on study of Vedantic meditation, Nididhyasanam. Krishna divides this into five topics mainly. They are Bahiranga Sadhanam, Vishesha Sadhanani, Dhyana Swarupam, Dhyana Palam, Dhyana Pratibandha Pariharam. So far, we have studied up to the fourth topic, Dhyana Palam, in the last class, verse 6.32. The fifth topic is, which we are currently discussing, runs from verse 6.33 to 6.36. The topic is Dhyana Pratibandha Parihara, which refers to obstacles to meditation practice and their remedies. This topic begins with Arjuna asking a question to Krishna. The verse goes like this. Yo yam yogasvaya proktaha samyena madhusudana yetasyaham na pashyami chanchalatvatstipim stiram. Meaning, O oh Arjuna, because of restlessness, I do not see the steady existence of this yoga, which yoga was imparted by you as sameness of vision. Here, Arjuna clearly understands the Krishna's teachings. He states that his acute brain allows him to observe whatever wisdom Krishna imparts. However, he is unable to benefit from the knowledge due to his wandering mind. Next slide, sir. The universal fact is that the mind is not readily controlled. Swami Sarvapriyanandaji provides a great metaphor 
for the mind manasu as a monkey who has consumed wine and been stung by the scorpion the way it jumps around unable to navigate itself this is how the mind wanders and jumps so arjuna is addressing the underlying problem of the mind which is a universal problem that everyone faces in the mandukya upanishad written by gaudapada acharya under the name of manu nigraha he clearly explains four obstacles to vedantic meditation along with remedies let us look into what are those obstacles first one is layaha vikshepaha kashayaha last one is rasasvadaha laya means the dullness of the mind vikshepaha is restless or wandering mind kashayaha means extreme likes and dislikes stabdaha so rasasvadaha means gets attached to meditating joy experienced only during meditation or it is a conditional joy out of four obstacles arjuna is addressing the problem of vikshepaha wandering restless mind in this verse in the next slide we can see the remedies for the obstacles which krishna discusses repeatedly in short for all obstacles remedies are abhyasa repeated practice proper food proper sleep vairagya are the main ways of dealing with it so in the shloka arjuna says o madhusudana ayam yoga dhyana yoga paya prokta whatever vedantic meditation you have mentioned so far i need to remind myself on a regular basis and i should understand the difference between the atma and anatma i am only atma else everything is anatma i have gotten all these through my past karmas these are the things i have repeatedly reminded myself in dhyanam certainly in the swarupam of what samena seem atma darshana roopam i must remain true to myself which is my chaitanya swarupam all of these body mind complex principles belongs to the evolving principle but i the witness remains unaltered or unalterable chaitanya swarupam arjuna cries to krishna stating that uh, krishna has explained all these but there is an inert problem that is the mind etanyaham stiram stitin na pashyami arjuna the mahabaho says because of my reasonable good intellect i am able to take your wisdom and reasonably interpret it but arjuna claims that he is a madhyam adhikari which means that he is able to accept this message but it does not stick with him therefore the problem is retention of the given wisdom recognizing the same vedanta divides the students into three categories uttam adhikari madhyam adhikari and adham adhikari uttam adhikari means one who has got both reception and retention madhyam adhikari is one who has the ability of reception but no retention and adham adhikari means who does not have either reception or retention here arjuna also claims that he belongs to madhyam adhikari category he further pins down to the crux of the reason why he is not able to perform the same why he is not able to retain the knowledge he states that it is because of chanchalatvam heavy restlessness arjuna has the problem of chanchalatvam that is rajoguna pradhana which can be translated to wandering restless mind certainly arjuna feels this problem has something more in it to be described because this problem is not a simple one rather it is a crucial obstacle in the vedantic progression or in at least vedantic meditation therefore he continues expressing his problem more clearly in subsequent verses hari om thank you thank you madam uh, dr sanjay merhosra will now explain the other aspects of chanchala manaha verse 34 dr sanjay please hari om uh, in the introduction to the verse uh, which is the 34th verse why do we require dhyana once we have obtained the knowledge through shravanam maranam and then we have to practice by vidyasanam but 
to do that our mind should become tranquil if the mind is not tranquil the process of nidhyasana does not happen so dhyana is required for discipline in the mind mind you dhyana does not give us knowledge most of the dhyana part is derived from the patanjali's yoga sutra which is of course the ashtanga yoga and if you are not able to discipline the mind to practice what you have learned by the shravanam mananam of the shastra then the vedantic study remains a intellectual study only if the mind is indisciplined it becomes an obstacle in the progress of the individual one requires to control the mind by the process of vedantic meditation and what is vedantic meditation vedantic meditation is to understand and meditate on the fact that i am not this body mind complex i am that higher self which is eternal this is the understanding which we have to bring in and we have to remind ourselves again and again and the question about the laya next slide sir the vikshepa which is the hyperactivity of the mind kasaya and rasaswada these are again derived from the patanjali's expressions where he talks about that the mind may have four or five stages he calls it vikshepa shepa nidra moodha and nirodha that is why he talks about yogascha chitta vritti nirodha which i have not discussed this discussed here in the process of becoming meditative he uses four types of expression that the mind has to concentrate on a pratikam or an alambam the pratikam and alambam are the vastu anugata or vichar anugata which means that you can concentrate on a vastu which may be a deity which may be a picture which may be a cross and then you have to concentrate upon a, a which are which may be a mantra a thought then he says that that mind now becomes asmita anugata that is the last remnant of rajas which is also have to go away to, for this mind to become completely devoid of any rasa also so rasaswada which he calls as the asmita anu, anugata is the last obstacle in the state of meditation when the meditative mind becomes so enjoyable that he wants to be in that state but as soon as his meditation is over he is back to he is back to his original self which is his sansaric self next slide please so arjuna's problem is not able to retain the teaching and that is what was described in the last but etyasyaham sthiram stutim na pashyami i am not able to see the steady existence of the yoga which has been taught by krishna because of what because of my chanchalatvam my mind is chanchal chanchal and as uh, was described previously the mind is like a monkey which is uh, bitten by a scorpion and has drunk some wine this is a quote which actually came from uh, vivekanand which is quoted by swami sarpriyananda so what is the problem of this there is lack of sthitam and that is because the rajogun is still not gone which is due to wandering mind these problems are expressed in the next verse chanchalam hi manah krishna pramathi balavadradam tasyaham nigraham manne vayo ravi vayo riva sudushkaram o krishna manah hi the mind is indeed chanchalam and chanchalam means fickle it runs away from one place to another pramathi pramathi means turbulent and is very very strong strong mind is once it gets an idea about something it doesn't want to change that idea it becomes dradam also dradam means drad firm ahamanye i consider it is difficult to restrain it because it is like vayu because vayu you cannot control if there is something which is tangible you can actually hold it 
But something like Vayu, which is not tangible, it is very difficult to hold. So he says, Oh Krishna, this mind is indeed fickle, turbulent, powerful and firm. I consider it, consider its restraint to be very difficult, like that of the wind. Chanchalam hi manah Krishna, pramathi balavadradam, tasyaham nigraham manne, vayo riva sudushkaram. Next slide. Hey Krishna, mind is highly active, fickle and pramathi. It is not only turbulent, it itself, it makes other organs also turbulent. The whole body becomes turbulent. And that is the effect of the body through the various sympathetic system where we get into a state of anxiety, we get into a state of nervousness, a heart rate goes up. That is the effect of a fickle mind. It is balavad. Powerful and conquers the wisdom. My intellect and dhridam means that it's firm in its own field of worrying or anxiety. Because of this, Arjuna says, Tasya Nigraham Sudushkaram. Weaning of the mind from its own habitual responses is very difficult. And here he equates it to the Vayu, like controlling the wind as it is not a tangible thing to be conquered. Next slide, please. So mind is chanchalatvam, wavered and turbulent. It is strong and firm and therefore difficult to control. That's why the mano nigraham is not an easy process. Who can control the mind? Who has won the mind? Mano jaya is the biggest victory of the life as the Vedanta teaches Hari Om sir. Thank you, sir. Summarizing this verse, we have seen Arjuna had described the mind as chanchala, fickle, pramathi, turbulent, balavata, powerful, and dridham, or firm. Let's understand the word pramathi to a little extent. A turbulent mind induces turbulence, as Dr. Jess said, in the body and sense organs. Mathanathi means churning of the mind with vicious thoughts can make a person angry and bitter. That is his manasic reaction. Or he can yell out abuses. That's his verbal. And, or he can even get physically abusive. Balavata means the mind gets more powerful than the intellect. This is a reversal of hierarchy. Like dushta ashwa iva saradehe. And dridham means firm. Nishta in a negative way. A vasana. Therefore, Krishna, uh, therefore, Arjuna says, Mano Nigraha is Sudushka. Uh, Krishna says, of course, it is dush, su, Sudushkaram. Madam Pannaga will now uh, explain verse 35 for us. Pannaga, please. Hari Hiyom, Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Now that we have understood the problem, let us see the solution that Lord Krishna gives us. Chanting the verse. Mm -hmm. Shri Bhagavan Uacha Asam Shayam Mahabaho Mano Durnigraham Chalam Abhyase Natu Kaunteya Vairagena Chagrahyate. Seeing its meaning, Shri Bhagavan Uacha, the Lord answered, Mahabaho, O Arjuna. Here, the word Mahabaho is used ironically. Lord Krishna is calling Arjuna the mighty armed warrior who defeats powerful enemies but is finding it difficult to control his own little mind. But being the benevolent teacher, Lord Krishna says, Asamshayam, what without doubt what you say about the mind is true, especially in today's age of social media and WhatsApp. Think that's what makes the, the, the Bhagavad Gita so glorious, that all its teachings can be applied today. Coming back, so the mind is chalam and durnigraham. It's highly fickle, wavered and outgoing. Yet, Lord Krishna says, it is possible to restrain it okay. by abhyasa, practice yeah. and vairagya, detachment. The same is mentioned in Patanjali's Yoga Sutra also. So this is an important verse giving us practical advice for our progress as spiritual seekers or for that matter, in any worldly matter where we wish to apply our mind to. 
Next slide. Let us consider the two solutions. First is Abhyasa. So the rule number one is the mind will always dwell upon anything without distraction in which it has got interest. We have seen how immersed we are while watching a movie for three hours, watching a cricket match for half a day, or for a book lover being engrossed in a book for an entire day. So the basic principle is everyone is capable of concentration in their area of interest. This interest is developed when we value the joy it brings us. I think this is key. Next slide. The first step for effective Nidhyasana is therefore to develop value for Atma Gnana because it is going to bring us the greatest joy of Jeevan Mukti. So we spend more time listening to our scriptures, reading the texts and sharing our learning with like-minded people like how we're doing now in Satsanga. Through this process, we develop Viveka, the important ability to discriminate between what is Nitya, eternal, and what is Anitya, ephemeral, and but which appears real. We learn that this changing, unpredictable, perishable world cannot give us the uninterrupted peace, security, and happiness that we're always looking for. Only Atma Gnana can. Through the practice of Viveka, our emotional dependence on the world reduces, and this is called Vairagya. With Viveka Abhyasa and Vairagya, it becomes easier for our mind to dwell on the teaching of Vedanta because now we place a higher value on Atma Gnana, which is going to give us uh, lasting joy, and a lower functional value for our transactional purposes on our daily worldly commitments, like our job, the many household chores or anything else. So they do not disturb us during meditation. Next slide, sir. Let us recollect the path of a spiritual seeker. It is Karma Yoga first and then Upasana Yoga and then Gnana Yoga. Lord Krishna has already mentioned Karma Yoga in the beginning of the sixth chapter as a general discipline to be followed to remove Vikshepa. Shankaracharya in his Bhashyam strongly recommends we practice Upasana, that is dwelling on the Saguna nature of Ishvara for mind control. It is deliberately making the mind listen to the intellect. As Dr. Anupama Ma'am mentioned previously, the role has now become reversed for Arjuna. His intellect is listening to his mind. So through Upasana, we make the mind listen to the intellect. If we have come to Gnana Yoga without sufficient preparation, then we have to include more Karma Yoga and Upasana in our daily routine to train our minds. Then, when we come to Gnana Yoga, the Saguna form is replaced by Nirguna form during Nidhyasana. Therefore, our spiritual journey is one of mind transformation because the mind is the seat of all human experience. Next slide, sir. What are the immediate results of practicing Nidhityasana? It brings about reduction in FIR as mentioned. The frequency intensity of emotional disturbances reduce and the recovery period from each of these instances also reduces. So our mind is now enjoying calm periods for extended lengths of time. From closed eye meditation, we progress to open eye meditation where we are able to recall the Vedantic teaching during our worldly transactions too. Then, slowly, we are able to develop the liberating perspective of seeing Sarvatra Samadarshanam, that is seeing the Atma in and through all we see. Ekam Evam Advitiyam. To conclude, in the next slide, meditation is a learned skill. Like any skill, it requires consistent, committed practice. Clarity about our goal of Jivan Mukti and the means of spiritual sadhana gives us viveka. Viveka leads to vairagya, that is natural disinclination towards worldly objects as a source of tripti. Vairagya helps directing the mind to its source, the atma. Finally, vairagya and the abhyasa of viveka and upasana help remove the wandering nature of the mind, enabling easy and effective nididhyasana. Thank you, Hari Thank you, Panaga. That was excellent.
a short review of the verse that you have just done. We have seen that for whatever difficulty Arjuna explained, Krishna flatly agrees and he says, Manaha Dur Nigraha. It is difficult to restrain the mind because Vikshepa or extrovertedness is not just Arjuna's problem, but it's a problem of the entire mankind. Remember, Yamadharma Raja had said, Paran Chikhane Vyatrinatsvayambu. The Lord has destroyed our sense organs by making them extroverted. Tasmat Parang Pashyati Na Antaratman. That is why we are distracted by the Anatma Prapancha, losing focus on the Atma. Also, Chanchalam, the mind is fickle, it is elusive. Manu Nigraha is as difficult as trying to grasp a fish in water or even a slippery eel. Krishna's remedy was two profound words, Vairagyam and Abhyasam, Viveka Abhyasam. This means enabling ourselves to discriminate Nitya from Anitya, Atma from Anatma, when? All the time. Sri Bhaskar will now explain verse 36 for us. Yes, Sri Guru Bhagavan Namaha. This verse is very profound and it is in fact a reinforcement of the previous verse. Here, Lord Krishna declares that Dhyana Yoga is difficult to attain with the unbridled mind, but certainly possible by self-control through proper means. And the verse goes like this. Asam yathat mana yogo dush prapamatihi vashyat mana tu yathatha shakyo vaptu upayataha. Well, Viveka and Vairagya are the only two methods by which the mind can let go the fatal embrace in which man is held by the objective world. Lord reveals an upaya to gain Viveka and Vairagya, that is through Abhyasa, by which the mind changes the interest from something uh, sort of uh, imperishable to something imperishable, something fake to something real. Apparently, if the mind has not practiced these two methods, Viveka and Vairagya, such a mind is asam, asam yet Atma. Here, Atma means mind. The mind, when channelized, okay, faces perishable to imperishable, unhealthy to healthy, from Artha Kama Pradhana to Dharma Moksha Pradhana. And if this redefining is not done, such a mind is called Prakrita Antakkarana, in which the mind remains in the external chart. The weak, the dull, the idle, and the negligent people, Yoga Dushprayaha, can never achieve anything uh, sort of even in the worldly matters, nevertheless in spiritual life too. Even if they sit for meditation, they always yearn for something cheap or inferior in the creation. Swami Paramatmananda tells us that if you have intense interest in something, then it is for sure your mind will be dwelling upon that thought. Even if you don't sit in Padmasana or even you shut to close your eyes. Prapa iti matiti. That's what he says. Swami Paramatmananda presents a classic example of a new mother. Mother having emptying transactions or multitasking. Yet her mind revolves around the child. Pashyan, Shraman, Parshan, Jignam. And since the mother's attention is on the child in every situation, Swamiji says, the problem now is to take the child out of the mind. Since she has so much love, so much value and by enjoying motherhood. If a person has values, he becomes vasyatma or samyatma, meaning one who is who has viveka and vairagya with clear priorities on the teaching. And he is becoming or uh, he is an ideal person to sit in meditation. It is emphasized that the mind should be dealt as a deadly foe and should be conquered by firm action through free force or skill. Well, in fact, it is said that one should be a strategist in spiritual life too. 
For instance, great commanders advance or withdraw their forces for strategical reasons to gain ultimate victory. We observe Lord Krishna strategy at play here. So whenever uh, the action has to be followed, he limits his sermon very briefly. But on the other hand, when knowledge has to be imparted, he unfolds it exhaustively. Sri Krishna exhorts about the upaya of pursuing Viveka and Vairagya, which is the theory part. Whereas gaining the vision is the abhyasa, wherein Arjuna gaining yoga was no longer in Krishna's hands. And that's the reason Krishna's job is done when he conveys the subject matter, that is yoga. We come to understand Krishna's methodology for something to be done and differently for something to be understood. Lord advocates that one should be clear and skillful in dealing with the mind. Discipline and firmness may not always uh, get results. Hence, skill becomes necessary to deal with the powerful player that is mind. The seeker should have only one aim, and that is undeterred or peculiar propensity of his own mind. And to get into a state of restless restfulness by whatever way he controls or seems to be best at your home. Thank you, sir. We see the key message again and again is Viveka and Vairagya. They are the only means of channeling the mind from the perishable to the imperishable, from the impermanent to the finite. Uh, to the uh, from the imperish uh, from the impermanent finite to the permanent infinite. Uh, Dr. Asha Naik will now explain verse thirty-seven for us. Madam Asha, please. Om Guru Vyonama Jai Guru Din. Arjuna Uvacha. Aita Aita Shraddha Yopata Ha Yoga Chalita Manasa Ha Aprapya Yoga Samvidin. Kam gatim Krishna gachati. The meaning, Arjuna asked, O Krishna, one who is endowed with faith, but whose effort is insufficient and whose mind has strayed away from Dhyana Yoga. So having not attained the result of Dhyana Yoga, what goal does he attain? Next slide. This is the meaning which we'll go into detail. Next slide. The previous, it is told about the previous verse. Next slide, sir. About uh, mind management and parihara, that is satsanga. So we'll go into the next slide again. So next slide. Arjuna continues to be pessimistic. And so he thinks it's not possible to manage a mind. Krishna said, never look down on yourself. Don't be diffident. And if you want Atma Krupa, you have to believe in yourself, which is told in a fifth verse, the Atma. Now Arjun concludes in this life he is not going to get moksha. So what to do? Plan for the next life. So this yoga brashta, what will happen to him? Yoga brashta is a spiritual failure because of insufficient effort. And that insufficient effort, why does it insufficient effort? Because difficulties like Adi Bhautika, Adi Daivika and Adhatmika come. So it is Alpa Prayatna Bhavati. Next slide, sir. So, Shraddhaya Upareta Yoga Chalita Manasa Kam Gatita Gati Gachata. Here, person is very sincere, there is value for spiritual life and could not follow for some obstruction which already we told. So, what happens? This person is Yoga Chalita Manasa. It's also called Yoga Brashta. What will happen to him? Yoga Samsidim Aprapya. So, he cannot attain. Next slide. So we'll go to Bhashyam. Ait aprayatnavan yoga marge shadde astika buddhya chapeta yoga ad antakale api chalitam manasam mano yasya sa chalitam manasa brashta smutisa aprapaya yoga samsi din yoga phalam samyak darshanam kam gatim krishna gachati. So let's go word by word. Next slide, sir. Ayati. Ayati is a mulam and is equal to a prayatnavan, the one who could not exert sufficiently. That means it is not absent, but it is not sufficient. 
so called it is alpa artha little alpa yatiha yatiha is translated into alpa yatiha and yatiha also means lack of afford and yatna yatna is afford so aprayatna one is one who did not have sufficient afford because of obstruction which already we have spoken next slide sir shraddhaya upai shraddhaya is working hard with dedication now with working with hard dedication is called yoga marga he is already in yoga marga shraddhaya upai he was having shraddha faith sincerity in yoga marga and sanyasa marga also known as vidasha sanyasa marga spoken detail in fifth fifth chapter upeta means endowed with shraddha we already told what shraddha is shraddha is astikya buddhaya he had faith in validity of his way of life next time so now what happens is antakale even at the fag end of life he is struggling to change the format so in spite of so many years of struggle chalitam chanchal that is manasam yasya manasa manasam is mana here and yasa is yoga bhrashta yoga bhrashta what his mind has slipped from attempted it is attempted binary format to triangular format so there is a challenge god dependence or self dependence this is the challenge next astika next slide astika is karma yoga is taking us from world dependence to god dependence and nastika is from god dependence to self dependence now this karma yoga to gyan yoga i refuse to depend on any bless factor why is that because i am satyam to the entire creation the whole world depends on me maya sakalam datam faith in myself is faith in upanishad next slide so manaha chalitam why is that manaha chalitam because prashta smrita is forgotten all the knowledge everything should spiritual classes gone with the wind but krishna says don't worry you will, when you take next janma you will get back everything so prashta smrita saha such a yoga prashta susan what happens to him yoga samsimtim apravaya next slide samsiddhin is without attaining success in a yoga sadhana samsiddhin is a human mulam so equal to yoga phala so defining how do you define success of this yana yoga success is measured only by one way changing the format is the only criteria not number of classes not number of courses number of years teaching in sanskrit and nothing nothing helps only changing the format so next slide is conclusion because or because of failure of sadhana of a chalita mind that is chanchal mind moksha phalam he has not got attained so question is kam gati gachati where will i go what punar janma will i get will i get inferior or same manushya janma so to be born as human being and to be interested in spirituality opportunity to pursue the spirituality requires lot of purva janma punya so because of some obstacles which already told he could not attain phalam so kam gati gachati what is the lot or what is the goal for me next janma hey krishna hari om thank you madam um as madam just explained Although Arjuna appears to be pessimistic, in reality he is expressing our doubts, our anxieties about success in this spiritual field, and those who are not successful are called yoga brashta or yoga chalita manasaha. The classical examples were stories of Jada Bharata and the fawn, Vishwamitra and his creation of Trishanku Swarga. so why does one become a yoga prashta as madam just said a yatihi or alpa prayatna and the pratibandhas which can just happen without our control adi dhaivika adi bhautika and adhyatmika what is the result yoga samsiddhim aprapti inability to attain moksha and what is his fate kam gatim gachati krishna says न एव इह न अमुत्र विद्यते विनाशः कृष्णा एम्फेटिकली रिअश्योर्स अर्जुना दैट अ डूअर ऑफ गुड शल नेवर एवर बी गेट इवल 
he will be reborn in an environment that is congenial for spiritual progress. Thank you. We have come to the end of today's satsanga, which has enriched our spiritual learning. Grateful thanks to all the speakers and Dr. Anupama for bringing in a lot of clarity to our understanding of our mind, which can either be an obstacle or a source of strength, depending on how we put it to use. Param Vedanta thanks each one of you for your continued interest in the pursuit of Atma Vidya through our series of sessions and also for your positive feedback. The next session is on the 7th of June 24 on Mandukya Upanishad. We conclude today's session with our usual Shanti Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Krishnam Vande Jagadguru.